Welcome to Stockholm. My name is Jan Gradwall. I'm a music journalist and I'm very honored to host this interview with two of the greatest songwriters of all time. So, very welcome Björn and Benny. Hey, hey. Thank you. And Thank welcome you. all you yeah. to this interview that is promising to be one of the most interesting ones we've ever heard. <laughs> Yeah. I, I've been writing about music for like 35 years and for me everything started when I was 10 years old and bought the first LP for my own money, which was Waterloo. Mm -hmm. And that was recorded right, right here. here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Where are we right now? Can you explain that? We're hmm? in the Metronome Studio. It used to be called the Metronome Studio. And we had one day a week in the studio. Uh, w to record, um, and this is where we recorded Waterloo. Well, yeah, Polar Music others. had one week, yes. one day a week. Mm. Yeah, and we we well we tried to steal as many of them as we could once we formed that, but we did other stuff too here. Yeah, so, yeah, we we had to speed it up a bit. Yeah, so but we we recognize this desk b b control desk behind us. Yeah, uh, same thing, old same. Neve desk. Um, the grand piano in the background, yeah. the grand piano where you play Dancing Queen, yeah, Mamma yeah. Mia, right? Everything. Yeah. yeah. It's a Berlin, uh, Swedish. Mm. Uh, and I think the frame is something special with the frame. I don't know what's it, what it's made of, but it's, it's special. Mm. It's still actually quite all right, although it must be at least 50 years old. Can you sort of uh, talk about a typical day in the studio back then. What were your studio hours? How did you organize a typical studio day? 10 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Not before 10. Nobody wants to work before 10 if you're a musician. So we started at 10. We promised Michael Tretov that he would always have a decent lunch. He didn't want to go out. To, there was a terrible uh, hot dog stand just outside the door here uneatable. So he said, I'm not going to do that. We have to eat properly, which we did. Yeah. We had proper lunches every day, but we could work very late. Yeah. Ten. Because we only had this day yeah. in the beginning. And you know, we, when we produced a single, for, not for ABBA, but for other people, for instance, it might take, a, we had to do it in a day. Mm. We had to mix the single at the end of the day and everything had to be done. Yeah. Because he was you know, had to be ready the yeah, next day. Yeah. But a typical ABBA day, we'd, we'd, we'd come in at, at, at 10 and we'd work at a much leisurely, more leisurely pace, I think, than we did with yeah, the other it, guys. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't have time enough, I'd say. No, no. I think if, if you listen carefully, you can hear that on the first albums, that we, we ran out of time. But, uh, well, That's some things you have to, you have yeah, to live yeah. with. Yeah. And when you arrived here, you had already written the melodies. You two yeah. worked in this uh, archipelago outside Stockholm yeah, yeah. in a very small house, right? Yeah. Or in the basement of my house at Linge or at your mm. house. Yeah. Or we also had a piano at the office mm. at Jungfrugatan, a little piano. So we, we worked wherever we could work. Mm. It was mainly during the summers we spent in, in, out in, the, in the archipelago, in the little hut. Mm. And we would have the, uh, the, the melody and, and Benny would have written down the chords. And um, sometimes I had, would have some kind of dummy lyric, mm. but never, never the one that he ended up with. No. Just a dummy. And then we'd, yeah. musicians would come in and play to them over and over again and gradually... Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I don't read music or write music. So, but I, I know how to sort of spread the harmonies out. Mm. So here you go from here to there, and I, I know what a wheel is. I know what, a, you know, repetition signs and stuff. So, so I, I did that. And the occasional bass note mm. under the harmony. Yes. Yeah. But that's quite unusual because you had the melodies that you s sat together in this small house, and then you sort of recorded like the basic tracks. Yeah. Before there was a lyric, really. Yeah. And then yes. you, Björn, went home with like a cassette tape yeah. and wrote the, the lyric. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was because I tried a couple of times to, you know, to have the lyrics ready. And, and the tune, the song would change shape completely and the lyric was just not the right one. Mm. 
So, so I stopped doing that. <laughs> not even I do it sometimes, but <laughs> but uh, so I stopped doing that. Yeah. But do you think that sort of formed the lyrics in a way? Because I guess that's a quite a private thing to do. You go home, maybe with this cassette, listen to it, and uh, the lyrics just got better and better, deeper and deeper. And you wrote some really personal lyrics about divorce and love. Do you think that process maybe helped that? It was easier to sit at home in the dark and write those lyrics. Uh, than doing it together, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> or yeah. together with the ladies. Yeah, they, 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 but, they, they, they was meaning, yeah. No, but the thing is that the music speaks. Mm. You know, somehow it does. It has something to say. And uh, it's just a matter of listening hard enough to what is, it, what is this about? And, uh, and year by year, I had to say that the backing tracks got got better and more yeah, yeah. Mm. more intricate. We could add stuff with mm. with with synthesizers and things yeah. that we didn't have from the beginning. So that would make it sort of sound almost ready, like yeah, yes. So the atmosphere was was there mm. around the song from from the start, and then uh, yeah, uh, but. Sometimes that didn't work. I mean, with Chiquitita, I rewrote that two or three times because mm. it just didn't sound right when we got into the studio. Chiquitita is a nice little tune when you make a virtue out of necessity. It's the same chorus as verse. Ah, okay. <laughs> but you can't Not really, really tell. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but it's it's interesting with uh, I, I think music, writing music can be you you can look at it three aspects. There's a melody, there's a lyric, but there's a sound of the lyric and, and, and the, the, the sounds are very, very important. Mm. A lot of people just write lyrics and forget about the sound. But for me, it was always, you know, very important to, to make that kind of uh, an integrated part of it. Yeah, but like they said in that documentary, it has to ring well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's also, uh, there's, there's another thing. I mean, you have a melody, you have the harmonies, and you have a rhythm, right? That's just the fundament of a song, because everything that comes on onto a track is music. Every little thing, if you take a marimba in Mamma Mia, or if, I mean, there's, there's so many things going on. I think that's one of the good qualities with our recordings, that there's so many things going on that you don't really catch first time you listen, or second, or even third. But you will notice after a while that there's stuff going on mm. all the time. Uh, the more the merrier, you know? So, uh, yeah, a recording is not just a melody and the rhythm and the chorus, it's, it's, it's the whole package. That's interesting because this is a long time before you did musicals, but maybe the reason they work so well in like Mamma Mia, the musical and the movies, that the melodies and lyrics are really thought through from the beginning. It's not just a lyric to a melody, really express the same thing. Do, do you agree with that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a whole. Yeah, uh, because we work so tight together, and it's we, nice when it fits together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it should. Yeah. I think yeah. uh, that's the first thing I aim for <laughs> that it should fit. Yeah, yeah, you know, but but it should be a whole. You should feel it's an integrated whole at at the end when you listen to the final mix. When you listen to an ABBA song now, you, you immediately think, this is the ABBA sound. Yeah. When did you realize that you had an ABBA sound? Hmm. Was it here when Good we question. did Gamle Mann? Uh, when we first heard yeah. the girls, when they came in and helped us singing some backing vocals to a Swedish silly song, uh, we looked at us and said, boy. This yeah. is what it should yeah. be like. Why are we I trying to yeah. sing? Yeah. Yeah. When we have the ladies, they're here, they're singers. Why don't we let them sing? We write, they sing. The, but that's not... When I'd say that Frida and Agneta is 90% of the ABBA sound. That's what I think. You take the voices out, let someone else sing. Uh, it's not the same thing. But it, it might have been that song and in this very studio. Here, yeah. Yeah. 
that we realized, my God, they sound good <laughs> together. Yeah, something happened. Uh, and, and I mean, we've done we've done really good recordings for the Mamma Mia movie. Uh, both of them, great singers, Meryl and you, you name them all. That they're all they're all really good singers. But it does not sound like ABBA, although. I really tried to emulate everything we did with the songs originally to keep it mm. as they so, so they're recognizable, most of them. But it sounds great, but it does not sound ABBA. And so, and the girls. Thing, yeah. And, and uh, you know, when we did uh, Voyage, and, and we did the first recording we did, I think the, the vocals we did was uh, I Still Have Faith in You. And we didn't know after 40 years whether it would sound like ABBA or not. No. But it so did. Yeah. So can, can you explain how exactly do you work when they come in and, and you start... We just tell them what to do and then they do it. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. really? <laughs> no, no, but, but, they but had, you have a, like a process. And how, how, can, no, can I mean, they've that? had the songs, mm. right? They had demos or the backing tracks if we had them mm. and the lyrics. Yeah sent to them so they they when they came in to to do the vocals they knew it you know and then we just say okay ladies uh please and the funny thing after 40 years it's like we came back to like no time had passed everyone was sort of playing their roles yeah uh was so smooth quite extraordinary actually. yes yes very and they have this, they're both brilliant singers, but when they sing together, that's the totally unique ABBA thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they know. Yeah. Yeah. And one, Agneta Soprano and uh, Frida almost mezzo. Yeah. 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 And, and Frida's striving to get up there. Uh, it's uh, it's yeah. a little too high for her, but yeah. she does it, and yeah. then it sounds... There's a metal sound that yeah. is so typical. Maybe we could talk about uh, I Still Have Faith in You, one of the tracks from the new album, yeah. which is, I think, one of your best songs ever. Because I must say I agree. I think it's one of the best we've done. Because the way uh, Frida really has to, to, to struggle, and that's, that's uh, part of the magic of, 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 the, of, of the song. It, it's, it's not an easy song to, to, to sing. No, it's very low and it's very high. Mm. How did you write that? I know you, Benny, you took a little bit, uh, you, you stole from yourself in a bit. A little no, I just piece, borrowed. Uh, borrowed from yourself, <laughs> which is a very small piece of melody you did for uh, film music. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, um, uh, Ludwig was producing a movie called The Circle, a teenage thing sort of uh, fantasy-ish and uh, they asked me if I could write the music I did so da -da 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 -da, all done there's a little piece of music in there that I w was really fond of I have to fight to get it in but I did it's only like maybe 20 seconds and that's uh, I still have faith in you is it all of it? the beginning no no that's it and I didn't, I felt it would be sort of a waste to have a melody line like that sort of disappear into thin air in a movie that people will not see again, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I completed it. Uh, yeah, I like it. And it was... Uh, and it's a bloody great lyric too. It's like an I have anthem. To, say, yeah. it's, to me it was like an anthem in a way. So it had to be about us, I guess, um, in a way. But it also at the same time about, you know, lots of other things. Speaking of anthems, you also have another really an anthem, Ode to, to Freedom, on the album, yeah. which is also brilliant. Especially when you look at uh, what's happening in, in the world right now. Yeah. That song becomes even better and more important. Can you talk a little bit about that song? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's, I've had it for a while, the song itself, but nowhere to put it. There's never been a space to put it in. Uh, 
it's and it's, it's I mean it's not a pop song, but on the other hand, we've always made albums with pop songs and maybe not a pop song in them as well. It's a sort of a brand, yeah. so I, we we could use that. Yeah. Actually, I had a, 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 a an email yesterday from a, someone who wants to. She's made a choir arrangement on that one. She mm -hmm. wants to send it down to her pals, conductors in 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 uh, the Baltic states. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I say, yeah, fine, you do that. Mm. And I, I tried various things, but I uh, always came back to that it was. It's kind of majestic. It needs. Um, a lyric that is slighter, slightly larger than an ordinary pop lyric, and I've always thought there is no, there is no such thing as an ode to freedom, because it, freedom is so many things to so many people. So then there isn't one. There is an ode to joy, of course, but not to freedom. So the lyric is about if there's an ode to Billy Joe. <laughs> yes, that's an ode to Billy Joe. <laughs> So it's a, it, it's about you know if I'd ever write one, it wouldn't be. So it's so it's kind of reverse. But I was thinking about O oh, to Joy Beethoven when I heard it, which also the European Union uses as their sort of theme song or what yeah, you call it. Yeah. Were you aware of that when you wrote it that you really? were thinking about Beethoven's Ode to Joy. And, uh, I, I knew that, of course, that existed, and that is also a very majestic melody. But as I said, there is no Ode to Freedom, and freedom is such a concept that people have different, you know, opinions of. And and I th I think it's very interesting to to explore what is freedom. And that's that's why I wish in the song that someone would write an ode to freedom. What was it like going back in the studio as Abba again for the first time in like 38, 39 years? I mean, the way you record albums has really changed. How? What was different this time around? Do you think? Mm. I think we were more prepared because the tools at your hand today like my Sinclair thing, I can do the whole backing track on my own and swap the, the, the made-up guitars and drums and so for real guys playing. But basically it sounds the same. Yeah. If I play you the first demo of, of uh, I Still Have Faith in You, it's very similar to the final program, although they're real strings, they're real guitarists, bass players, drums. Yeah. That's percussion. a huge difference. Yeah. Because demos in those days, you know, didn't sound like that. And no, then, we're and, going Bjorn and I, piano, guitar, okay, yeah, guys, yeah. this is the song. And this this demo, oh, it's not even a demo, it's like a recording that yeah, you do. Well, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it's kind of ready, uh, which is a huge difference. What is but it takes discipline then when you write melodies, because... It sounds so good from the word go, so that you have to strive and, and don't get lazy. I think no. a lot of writers today get lazy because it sounds so good. Uh, whereas in the old days with with the piano and guitar, it didn't sound that good. No, because you were writing in this shed in the archipelago and if the melody really had to be good to sound good there with... Uh, sort of an auto tube piano, I think yeah. said, and, and a quite yeah. simple acoustic guitar. Two guys singing some kind of... Well, gibberish. melody always have to sound good on its own, really. Yeah. What is the secret of arranging and producing a song? Because I think one of the reasons the song still sounds so great and I still play the right, they are incredibly well-crafted. Can you talk a little bit about that, about arranging and producing songs? Mm. Well, just as I said earlier, I mean, it's a matter of putting all things together into one and try to fill in every empty spot with something, you know, so you don't have like two bars going when nothing is happening. I think, I don't know why that is, I mean, that's a personal thing, isn't it? This is, this is yeah, we can do this here and we can do that there and you try things. The problem we had actually with 
with uh, arrangements and so forth, with the vocals, because we did so many backing vocals, different on different spots, different styles in the same song, and we, did, we only had 16 tracks. Mm. So we had to bounce things together uh, to get room for the next layer of vocals. And then one might come up with an idea that was absolutely bloody wonderful, but it didn't fit with what we already did for two days. So we have to remake that because we liked this last part so good. Yeah. So it took time, but we had time then because we had our own studio and we had uh, very uh, tough ladies who, who they didn't give up. They could stand the whole day and sing, ooh, yeah. if we asked them to. And, and also, uh, you know, that every part of, of a song should be the best you can do at that moment. Not to be lazy and think well, the chorus is so good that it doesn't matter about the verse, which I think um, a lot of people do today. So, because all the little bits and pieces, bridges, verses, choruses, intros, they might have come at different moments. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was a marimba down here when we recorded Mamma Mia. Mm. We never used the marimba, but it fitted, you know. Da -di -da -di -da -di. I don't know why. Has it been here, it wouldn't have become what it is. Oh. So there are small things. It's, it's like it happens when it happens. And I think, it, I think it has to do with talent, actually. That you understand that there's a hole here, and we need to fill it with something, and it has to be good. And, and everything about ABBA has always been very organic. It just happens and nobody really knows why. Apart uh, from me. <laughs> uh, so, so nobody really can explain why we're sitting here right now. Uh, you know, why us? Why, why, why is the music still so much played? You mentioned um, Mamma Mia, the song earlier. Is it true that when you did that, you, the original thought was to have the chorus much bigger sounding and then at the last minute you took away all the music and just created this only vocal. Yeah, that happened in yeah. the mix. Yeah. You have a song, you try to make it sound great. And it did. I mean, even yeah. with the chorus with full on, but when we try to take everything away, just leave the voices in the piano, all of a sudden it became something else. Yeah. And we luckily realized that. Yes, we, we we tried, you know, it just happened. And the same thing, I think, with Money, 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 where the bass plays the melody. Yeah. There was also a yeah. moment like that. What? The bass playing the melody? But it does, in the chorus. I've never realized that, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. One other nerdy question about that. This, uh, when I kissed the teacher, this incredible sound with the sort of acoustic guitars, mm. It sounds like you have 200 acoustic guitars playing at the same time. How did you create that? That was also in this studio, right? No, that was at, in, at Polar. A uh, little studio upstairs. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's you playing the acoustic yeah. guitars. Damn, the thing damn, is, well, damn. Michael did something. I don't know what he did, but he did something to give it uh, this uh, wonderfully twangy, yeah. crisp sound. And it's hard to emulate without Michael Tretto. And Michael uh, Tretto is your brilliant engineer who worked yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, all the yes. years. Yeah. yeah, he was so brilliant. Um, and always, you know, sometimes he got tired of us, but uh, when Benny for the umpteenth time would turn his box of matches upside down. <laughs> he, had a, he smoked a pipe <laughs> and he had a big back <laughs> box of matches. And he opened it and I, I couldn't resist sort of turning it around. So. He opened and all <laughs> matches fell out. Yeah. And, and that happened quite a lot of yeah. times. You know, but it got even it got funnier, you know. Yeah, the, yeah. More, the more it happened. No, we had a great we had a great time. I think we must have laughed if we had eight hours yeah. sessions, we laughed at least one and a half hours of those. Yes. Incredible actually. Su such an atmosphere and and the musicians the same thing yeah yeah everyone laughed, laughed. the whole time <laughs> yeah L like it was it you know yeah like it was a yeah. playground 
Yeah, which it was in a yeah, way. Yeah. Very creative playground. A sort of a, a trademark of the ABBA sound is this combination of like happy and sad. The songs are unique that they sound sort of melancholic and uplifting in the same way. Mm. Where does that come from? Maybe it's impossible to ask, but where does that uh, that combination come from? Uh, well, it's uh, I don't know. I think it's a well, think what's voices. good is good. Is this a good song? No. This one? No. This one? Yes. Well, why is that? Why does one make the choices one make? I don't know that. All I know is that if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And when it happens, it has an ingredient of something. Mm. I don't know, personality? Uh, I don't know what to, what to call it, but something that talks to you. So this, this is good. We have to keep this and work on it, right? Mm. I don't know this about... I know they're not, they're, they're not as happy as you think they are. If you play them sort of gentle, you can hear that. But there, there, there's a kind of a jubilant quality in the voices of, of the ladies. Even if they sing very sad songs, but together they sound somehow jubilant. If yeah, you can, to, at the same time. Listening to Frida today when we were rehearsing with the band, mm. and she's singing... <clears throat> Uh, when all is said and done, mm -hmm. which is sort of a, it's not a sad song, but it has, it's, it's dealing with, with difficult stuff. And it's, it's an incredible energy. Yeah. Which it wouldn't have been if we would have done it today, I think. It would have been more mellow, more sort of mm -hmm. soft, but yeah. it's bang on and it's quite wonderful. Do you think that melancholic quality in the melody has something to do with your roots like you Benny your yeah grandfather. because we're living in the vodka belt you that's why yeah. yeah and your grandfather told you to play accordion and you Bjorn played folk music with Hotenani singers mm. and in old Swedish folk music there's a lot of vodka dark oh, that's minor <laughs> uh, yeah, very minor key yes no yeah. but the whole fiddle tradition yeah you know, it's uh, absolutely it's, uh, yeah, but it's not, I don't know if that's melancholy. No, it, it's uh, what I call happy sad. It's, it's this kind of sadness that is happy at the same time or has a happy ingredient. So it's not melancholy because that is dead down and, and this is different. Uh, and I think you hear that in, in, in Swedish folk music, when, in fiddlers. Oh, yeah. It's it's sad, but it's happy. Exuberant, and it's yeah. just yeah. It's it's for all of us. Yeah, it's meant to be for all of us. Folks music, you know. Uh, other artists from your generation has made uh, sort of comeback albums. Almost all of them want to work with uh, young producers, uh, young songwriters to try to to be contemporary. Mm. Yeah. You're the exception. You have never done that. You've always done it on your own terms. Mm. Yeah, who else could? <laughs> oh, well, that's the, that's the only reason. It's like we have so many, many opportunities. So we can make a remix of Dancing Queen, send, send the multi-track and say, no bloody way, you, you write your own stuff. You know, because it's, I mean, we've done what we want to do. This is how we want it to sound. This is us. Mm. We give it to someone else, it'll be somebody else's. So they might as well do their own music. And this, this was one thing we decided early on with Voyage. But, okay, no, no trends, nothing, no, no looking at anything else, but just doing exactly what we want to do right now. And, and that's what we've done. Also the fact that, I mean, I don't know what's going on now, so there's nothing to, to, to sort of look for. But in the, in, the, in the 70s, of course, we li listened to everything happening around us. Yeah. Our contemporaries and yeah. ne never stealing, but always that getting was impulses. Yeah. Yes. To see what they were all doing, you know? And you listen to, like, I remember you said, like, what, what are the BDs doing? What are Eagles doing? Yeah, yeah. What's yeah, Rod Stewart's yeah. new kick drum sound? Yeah. You know, yeah. It's things like that. It's, it's, yeah. It was fun. Out of interest, really. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, for inspiration. Yeah. If you hear something great, then you try to, to do something great yourself. Now you're doing a live show. 
some acts in the 70s who were sort of labeled lightweight in a way were not considered or no one believed they would be great live acts they thought they were like studio projects but you are also the exception there you you were great live not Thank many you. not many people <laughs> expected that actually from no. like a well, very we, yeah, studio maybe. pop group yeah. yeah because the ladies can sing you know that's the thing I and mean, the band was great mm. so it becomes music even live i don't know if we were that great live because we were trying to reproduce our records we didn't sort of it wasn't all of a sudden a 10 minute long guitar solo no but no one wanted to hear a 10 minute long guitar <laughs> no, 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 no. or a drum probably, solo probably not a drum solo is great <laughs> but, but Thomas Johansson, the legendary concert promoter in Sweden, Live Nation, he told me that um, when you asked him to organize the world tours, you said costs didn't matter. You just asked for, 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 for the best persons who, who are doing the, the, the lightning for Queen, the sound for Rod Stewart, who works mm -hmm. for the Stones. You just wanted the best and you didn't care if you lost money on the tours. Is, is, is that true? Well, I, I, I think it is. We, yeah. It, I mean, it was him pestering us for to, for to go on tour. It was not us, you know. We, we, but once we did, we wanted to do the very best we could, and have the best people around us. That that was a natural thing, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. We did. We, we didn't make money on the tour. We never. No, never. We didn't never. tour. Period. We did. Maybe and, 100 gigs in 10 years? Yeah, and, and, and also smaller gigs than we could have done just to sell out, to be certain to sell out, you know, sometimes. And now you're doing your first live show in... Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> live. live. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little about how do you create a set list for the avatars? Was it difficult to choose what songs who gets to decide what songs? Can you talk a little bit about creating the set list? Well, there's one thing you have to do. You, you have to play Dancing Queen, right? You probably have to play Knowing Me, Knowing You, or Take a Chance on Me, or Waterloo. They're songs you have to play. So the trick was to, to take which ones do we take away that we should really play, yeah, but yeah. we'll replace them with something that's not that well known. And they're not many, but they have maybe four. Less well known, yeah. Yeah, but good but not, songs. Not, not, not that more we want than to that. be in there, yeah. But but it wasn't wasn't easy to, well, you know, a matter of killing your darlings, I guess, in, in a way. But uh, there was a long list. And, the good and thing we, it's, it's we are the ones who decide. There was a lot of opinions. You have to play money, money, money. Yeah. And I said. It's, it's no fun to play, you know? <laughs> as, a, as an avatar. <laughs> but how many so songs I, do we have now? I and think it's 24. 24, yeah. I'm not sure. But I think it's a good choice. Mm. So, um, yeah, four, four less. See, it's, it will be so interesting to see what this becomes once it's up there. And once, when we do the first run-through of the whole show. Yeah. What is it? What does it look like? How do we react to us being there or not being there? Live band? <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what it is. We're trying to f come up with the good. I mean, we, it's not avatars. I think avatars is the best. It's so corny, so it's good. But but. Uh, yeah. But, it, it, but they, they, for me, having seen them more and more, they become their own entities in in a way. They're us, but then again, they're yeah. the, and 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 we only have a vague vision of what it will be, all because nobody has seen it, including us. I mean, when the musicians are there and when they start to play, and the sound system is going, and the avatars yeah. are up there, and the audience is in the arena, this fantastic new arena then we'll know but nobody knows no. before then which is kind of cute <laughs> it's kind yeah. of yeah it it's like holding your nose and diving isn't mm. it some of those songs are like 50 years old now yeah but people still want to hear them 
And since we're talking for universal uh, publishing and label, uh, you get a lot of requests for Sphinx songs appearing yeah. in movies and yes. TV series. How do you choose what to say yes to and what to say no to? Only the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of, lot, yeah, a lot of, of opportunities, you know. It's difficult. And we, we, we basically, we, if it's a good, if it's a good film, if it's a good series or whatever, yeah, uh, and the money is okay. We'll probably, yeah, we often say yes, but we more often say no, because there's so many tiny things coming in. I think the absolute, the, the best sync ever from with us is, is in The Martian, when they play Waterloo and he's fixing his <laughs> yeah. thing to get away. That's wonderful. I wonder whose idea that was. Yeah, that's good. That's a good idea. But it's, it's uh, you know, sometimes we say yes to little obscure, projects as well because it sounds interesting and has and a I good course it's, it's generally yeah, yeah. good to yeah. be uh, I mean, to be heard and to be seen uh, in in those circumstances but do you have like how how do you actually do that do you have like meetings the four of you now we have this no thing. we have emails going yeah. out and it we mm -hmm. it's enough if one of us says no it's no right we all have to agree that's uh, the basis of yeah. what we're doing. And it's different. It comes from you know, sort of publishing, if it's just a song they want, uh, and from publishing and label, if it's uh, the master too, and then the two ladies are involved too, and they can have a say, otherwise it's Benny and me. Um, but we, we have said yes to a lot of things. Yeah. And, and that, that was good too, Muriel's Wedding. You know, things like that have been very good for us. Yeah, Mamma Mia, the movie. Yeah, yeah, not that bad. That was good, yeah. It was good that we said yes to that. <laughs> but you were known to to say no to almost everything. You, you've done one commercial, I think, like in 1975 for a Japanese TV manager factory. And then uh, you have said no to everything appearing in commercials. Yes. Mm. Will that change? No. No. <laughs> it won't. No. It was a horrific thing to hear that played back. You remember? We, we won't sing it here. No, no. It was, oh. Terrible. No. <laughs> it wasn't actually our fault. We were just sort of surfing along on something. Yeah. We also have some questions from people listening, coming in here. Uh, we have one from... Jonas in Stockholm, uh, whose question is, for a younger audience, you have joined TikTok and they are all rediscovering your music. Has this changed your view on social media in general and interacting on their platforms? For me, no. Uh, for ABBA, perhaps? Yes, and I, I think social media is, uh, in, in general, you know, something to be talked about, but I think TikTok seems to be a, quite a fun thing and, and, and it makes it possible for good songs, old, good old songs to be rediscovered in, in a good way. Look at Fleet, Fleetwood Mac and, and, and others and us as well. I mean, people might not have discovered that were it not for TikTok. So I'm all for that. I think that's great fun. We got another questions, uh, question from Adrian in London. Uh, you could say ABBA are best known for your hit singles, but what are your own favorite personal album tracks? Oh, there, there are many. It's impossible to say, really. Mm. The, uh, songs that for some reason or other weren't singles. I um, can say one. I can say uh, Our Last Summer. Yeah. Good track. When I Kiss the Teacher, yeah. good track. Eagle. Um, yeah, there are many. That, that that ended up as album tracks because we came up with new music. Otherwise, it could have been singles too. Move On, that's a good song. Um, what's on your playlist now and what are you inspired by today? What are you personally listening to right now? I'm only listening to classical music, really. 
constantly. Well, not during the days. I listen to our band rehearsing, but uh, when I listen to music, yeah. And what classical music are you listening to then? Oh, there's a lot of Johann Sebastian Bach, Mozart, the big guys, the good guys. You know, some Vivaldi. I don't listen so much to too much to, to, to modern music. It's the old goats. They speak to me. And it's a never ending source of incredibly good music. Never ends. And what about you, Bjorn? I'm 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 working on a project with Pippi Longstocking at the moment, a, a circus musical. So, uh, um, Benny has written a quite a uh, uh, couple of songs, and then some old songs that uh, I've written lyrics to. So I'm listening to that mostly the, right now. That was one of the questions actually. So it's good you addressed that because Pippi Longstocking is, I guess, everyone knows, one of the few Swedes who are as well known as ABBA is. But you have been working for this project a long time. Is it like, and it will be, be the premiere will be in Stockholm. It, it will be in Stockholm in the beginning of July. Is it like a play or is it like? No, a it's musical? a musical. It's a musical with circus elements. Uh, I think we done most of the questions. Um, there was one, 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 I guess, fan question for someone. What you mentioned. Um, TV shows that you say yes to some and no to some. What are your favorite TV shows? Oh, mm. right. You mean like series or what? Yeah, I or think, is it I, CNN I think, News? I, no, I, I think we will watch CNN I, I, News. Right, right now, now I'm watching Ozark. Okay, good. I think good. that's good. Yeah. It's. Uh, and, and they could have used money, 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 I guess, as a theme song. They might have asked us and we might have said no, for all I know. Yeah. Well, there's so much going on on, on on the streaming channels. Yeah. I have to say that it's been a while now, but I love Breaking Bad. Mm. But there's a lot of good things. Yeah. Game, Game of Thrones. Yes. I haven't seen that. At all. Oh, you got something good <laughs> to look forward to. You've been so, after being very quiet for 45 years, you have been extremely active right now and will be up until the premiere, I guess. Lately. Well, uh, it's sort of because they twist our arms. <laughs> uh, we haven't been very active. But yes, compared to the 40 years before that, yes, we decided to say, well, there's no point, you know. And for some funny reason, it's like ABBA is always up here for us. I mean, in the office, there are always stands constantly questions, uh, things to be done, dealt with. Mm. And I always had a feeling that people must get, aren't they tired of us now? <laughs> with Mamma Mia, Muriel's Wedding, you name it, all so much stuff. But that's only because one is in the middle of it and, and realizes that people yeah. on the street, they they are probably not fed up because they don't listen to it every, every day. <laughs> no, no, no they, they're not confronted by it every no. day. Confronted by your younger self all the time. When but one, I zap. Yeah. When one <laughs> asked you like 10 years ago, will ABBA ever reform? You said, no, no, no. never, never. Mm -hmm. I guess you will get the question now, will Voyage really be the last album or will you change your mind again and do another one? No, oh, no, not a new album. That's no. not going to happen. And, 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 and no tour. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll tour the little thing in London. Yes. Perhaps, eventually. Not tour it, but move it. If it all goes well, which we won't know until we see it. Thank you so much. Thank Great. you. Thank you.